वेलकम टू कॉन्सेप्शल केमिस्ट्री जी सी ई ओ लेवल सीरीज दिस इज यूनिट सिक्स केमिकल बॉन्डिंग द एलिमेंट नियोन इज यूज एज अ गैस इन कलर्ड लाइट सच एज एडवर्टीजमेंट साइंस नियोन एग्जिस्ट एज इंडिविजुअल एटम इट विल ऑलवेज बी फाउंड एज अ मोनो अटोमिक एलिमेंट वेरी फ्यू एलिमेंट एग्जिस्ट एज इंडिविजुअल एटम वाई इज दिस सो इन वॉट वे डू नोबल गैसेज बिहेव डिफरेंटली फ्राम दी अदर एलिमेंट इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू एक्सप्लोर दिस before moving towards noble gases it's very very important to understand why atoms make bond what is the reason behind their bonding actually all the atoms share their valence electrons valence electrons are the electrons which are present in the valence shell of an atom and the valence shell of an atom is basically the outermost orbit of an atom is called as a valence shell so in order to attain stability atoms share their valence electrons and what stability do they attain they try their level best to get the electronic structure of a noble gas what is electronic structure of a noble gas or either what is electronic configuration of a noble gas let's have a look at it electronic configuration is basically electronic means electrons configuration means arrangement of electrons in the shells it is basically an arrangement of electrons in the shells of an atom there are two types of configuration diplet configuration and octet configuration there are major four shells k l m n and in the k shell there are always two electrons l shell there will always be eight electrons m shell there will always be 18 electrons n shell 32 electrons now how will we get to know that there are two electrons in k shell eight in l and so on there is a chemist whose name is bohr he has given one formula which is called as bohr's formula or 2n2 formula here n is depicting the shell number of shell so if we are going to calculate number of electrons for the first shell what we are going to do we have to put 1 instead of n because this is the first shell of an atom this is how we are going to know that there are two electrons in the first shell of each atom we can also calculate number of electrons in the other uh, shells or in the respective shells so it's very easy to calculate it with the help of this formula let's proceed to its diplet configuration diplet means two configuration means arrangement of electrons always remember there are only two electrons present in the valence shell of all those atoms which are possessing diplet configuration and always keep this thing in your mind that there are only two elements in nature which are having diplet configuration hydrogen and helium hydrogen has proton number 1 proton number is also called as atomic number and helium has proton number 2 it also uh, pro proton number as i told you is called as atomic number so we can also say that helium has proton number or atomic number 2 proton number or either atomic number whatsoever you want to call it both of them are used for the same thing are basically the numbers which depict the position of an electron in periodic table and it also says that if the proton number is 1 so it means there is one proton and one electron in a electrically neutral or stable element so if we will look at hydrogen there is one electron so it means there is one electron in the valence shell or there is one valence electron in the valence shell so it needs one more electron in order to fulfill its diplet configuration so what it will do it will react with an other hydrogen atom and both of them will share their pair of electron one electron is uh, present in one hydrogen second electron is present in the second hydrogen both of them will share their one one electron and this is how they are going to get stability now 
these two electrons shared electrons are the property of both elements so it means there are two electrons in each of these hydrogen if we will talk about helium helium has two electrons so already helium is having two electron it doesn't need to have any other electron because it's duplet is satisfied so it is already having duplet configuration that's why it comes in the category of noble gases now what is octet configuration octa or octet means eight configuration means electrons so whenever there are eight electrons in the valence shell of any element so it means it is obeying or following octet configuration or in another way we can say that it is having noble gas configuration always remember all the noble gases are having octet configuration except helium which is possessing duplet configuration how are we going to figure out or write octet configuration for that what you need to do is you have to pick up the atomic number of the element let's suppose we are having sodium and its atomic number is 11 atomic number is also called as proton number so the second step is to accommodate its electrons in the major shell there is another kind of writing electronic configuration with the help of the subshells we will be doing it uh, in the further lecture so how are we going to now accommodate these electrons we know that atomic number is depicting number of electrons so how are we going to accommodate them into the shells first shell will always be contain containing two electrons maximum two electrons not more than that minimum one electron but here as we are having 11 electrons so we can accommodate two electrons in the first shell and then eight in the second and one will be left so that would be in the third shell now here you can see two eight and one plus them so overall there are 11 electrons so it means we have accommodated it accurately now there is one electron in the outermost orbit of sodium so it means that there is one valence electron in the valence shell because the last shell is called as valence shell so it's very easy for sodium to release this electron or to give off this electron rather than accepting seven more electrons in order to fulfill its octet so whenever it will lose this electron what will happen as it will lose this electron so here you can see now it has eight electrons in the outermost orbit so this is how it is it has attained its octet configuration so sodium ion will be having electronic configuration two and eight but the sodium element in the neutral state will be having two eight one but sodium ion after releasing its electron will be attaining this configuration so this is how it has attained its octet configuration next is chlorine if we talk about chlorine the atomic number of chlorine is 17 so it means there are two electrons in the first shell eight in the second and seven in the third shell so if we will count them so overall there are 17 electrons now here you can see seven valence electrons are already present in the valence shell so for chlorine it's very very easy to accept one electron in order to fulfill its octet rather than releasing its seven electron giving off seven electron is a very huge thing so what it will do it will accept one electron in order to fulfill its octet so after accepting one electron from sodium so it will be turned into a chloride ion which is two eight and eight now its configuration is two eight eight this is how it has attained its electronic configuration which is octet configuration and it has satisfied its valency next is how do atoms achieve electronic configuration of a noble gas always remember there is always exchange of electron either or sharing of electron in order to attain electronic configuration as we had seen in the previous two examples sodium and uh, chlorine we have seen sodium has released its electron whereas chlorine has accepted its electron so valence electron was lost by the sodium and valence electron was gained by the chlorine and the third one is sharing electron there are we had also taken a, one example of hydrogen in which two hydrogens were sharing their electrons so this is how with the help of sharing valence electron we can say that atoms achieve their electronic configuration three kinds of bonding bondings are there due to sharing of electron due to transfer of electron 
there are three kinds of linkages are produced or there are three kinds of bonds are produced which are ionic covalent and metallic we will be doing it in detail in the in the lecture so come towards the first one ionic bonding it is ionic bonding you can also call it in order to have ionic bonding the first thing is production of ions now how ions will be produced or and what is ion basically ion is any charge bearing species any substance which is having charge either positive or negative is called as ionic compound so um, simply it is called as ion and whenever a compound is produced due to the reaction of two ions is called as a ionic compound so an atom becomes an ion by losing electrons or gaining electrons always remember this is a very very important point in case of ionic bonding the electrons will be completely transferred now the electrons won't be the property of any of the uh, uh, element which is taking a part in the reaction now they will be if one species is giving off its electron so it will be uh, it won't be its property anymore if one uh, species is accepting the electron so now it is its total its uh, property so what will happen in case of ionic bonding in case of ion formation the electron will be completely transferred from one species to any other species one will completely donate it and the other reacting uh, reactant will completely accept it whereas if we will talk about sharing of electron in sharing of electron covalent compounds or covalent bonding will be produced um, in sharing of electron what happens the shared pair of electron is the property of the both reactants but in case of ionic bonding it will not be the property of any particular species it will be donated from a, a cation towards an anion so next is cation what is a cation actually all the metals are cationic in nature why are they cationic in nature and in periodic table we know s block elements and d block elements are metallic in nature so always always remember that all the metals are capable of producing ions which are cations means it will they will release their electrons they will always give off their electrons it's very very easy for metals to lose their electrons rather than accepting electrons so that's why they are capable of producing cations if we will take an example lithium lithium belongs to the first period of periodic table and its proton number is 3 so after writing its electronic configuration here we can see that we will get this electronic configuration there are two electrons in the first shell or innermost shell and there would be one valence electron in the outermost shell so it's very easy for lithium to give off this valence electron rather than accepting seven more electrons in order to fulfill its octet so what it will do it will release its this electron so what will be the equation it will be lithium will get a positive charge on it because it will become now a cation and this is one electron will be released so this is a cation any ion which is having a positive charge after releasing or giving off its electron is called as a cation next is an ion now how an ions are produced an ions are basically the negatively charged atoms by accepting electrons they are going to get a negative charge always remember all the elements which are non metallic in nature or which are present in p block are capable of producing an ions all the non metals are capable of producing an ions and uh, all the metals we know are present in p block let's take an example let's suppose we are talking about chlorine i told you that its proton number 17 so what will will be its electronic configuration its electronic configuration is 287 so it will it will be very very easy for chlorine to accept one electron rather than losing its seven electrons so after taking up one electron it will turn into a chloride if we will take an other example let's suppose we are taking um chlorine is also an example of an ion so the proton number of chlorine is 9 and its electronic configuration will be 2 7 
Again, here you can see seven electrons are present in the valence shell, so it's very, very easy for fluorine to accept one electron rather than losing its seven electrons. So what it will do? It will just accept one electron and it will be turned into a fluoride ion. This is how the anions will be produced. Always remember the size of anion will always be greater than the parental atom because it will attain, it will accept electrons, so that's why its size will increase. Some common cations and their charges, sodium, potassium, silver, hydrogen, we are having ammonium, we are having calcium, copper, here you can see copper and calcium they are losing their two electrons because they uh, calcium is present in the second period of the pre um, say second group of the periodic table whereas copper is present in the transition elements or D block so its uh, transition state or oxidation state is variable next is magnesium we are having iron iron will be found into two states because it is again a transition element so its oxidation state is variable so its tendency of losing Electrons is also variable. Sometimes it loses two electrons, sometimes it loses three electrons. We are having aluminium and chromium. So on. Next is common common anions. If we will talk about some common anions, let me write few for you people. Bromide, chloride hydride whenever hydrogen accepts electron it will turn into a hydronium ion or hydrogen ion which is having a positive charge but whenever it will accept an electron it will turn into an uh, into a hydride which is called as the anion of hydrogen we are having carbonate we are having this is bicarbonate we are having carbonate as well we are having sulfate, etc. So let's have a look at polyatomic anions. Now there are few compounds which are having a tendency to make polyatomic anions. Poly means many, atoms mean atoms, ions means ions. So ions which are composed of two or more than two covalent, uh, covalently bonded atoms are called as polyatomic anions or polyatomic cations. Again, Let's take an example of polyatomic cation. When a polyatomic molecule accepts electron, it will turn into polyatomic anion. Whenever it will lose electron, it will turn into polyatomic cation. There are certain examples. Let's take example of hydronium ion. If we talk about hydronium ion, so here is its formula. This is hydronium ion and in the hydronium ion here you can see this is composed of many atoms, right? So these atoms are covalently bonded with one another but still it is losing one electron. So that's why it is getting a positive charge. So this is the example of polyatomic cation. Come towards ammonium. In case of ammonium ion, if I will draw its structure, ammonium has a formula NH4+. plus. So this is nitrogen, it will be having hydrogens, four hydrogens connected. This is the structure of ammonia. When it will get attached to an other hydrogen, now it is turned into the structure of ammonium and it will get a positive charge. So this is how we are going to represent it out. Next is, if we talk about uh, polyatomic anions, so we are having carbonates bicarbonates we are having sulfates and how are we going to write down its structure this is carbon connected with three oxygens with negative sign so this is how we are going to represent carbonate ion and next is sulfate ion which is with a negative charge so this sulfate ion will be represented as Now it will be possessing four oxygens with a negative two. 
charge. So this is how we are going to represent polyatomic anion. These are some common polyatomic ions. Ionic bonding is basically an electrostatic force of attraction. Electrostatic force of attraction is basically the force which is produced due to the charges. Electro means charges. So it's an electrostatic force of attraction which is produced between a metal and a non-metal by transfer of valence electrons. Always remember ionic bond is produced between two charges a cation and an anion by the transfer of valence electrons. So all those compounds which are possessing ionic bonding are called as ionic compounds. Now what are the steps which are involved in the formation of ionic compound? There is a very important point dot and cross structure. Dot and cross structure will always represent the formation of ionic compound. Here the, the uh, let's suppose there are two reacting elements which are producing ionic compound. So the electrons, valence electrons of the first atom will be represented as dots and the second reacting element will be represented as cross. Let's take an example in order to understand it. Sodium has electronic configuration 281. Chlorine has electronic configuration 287. So let's draw their atomic structures. This is sodium. It is having two electrons over here and eight electrons over here. Whereas one electron over here in the outermost orbit. Here we are having chlorine. Two electrons in the first shell. Eight in the second. And... 7 in the last one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. So it is having, these are the atomic structures of two elements. Now this metal will give off its electron to this non-metal. So there is transfer of electron from sodium towards chlorine. And after this, what will happen? What will be produced? Now, we will be having, after the reaction, we will get this. This is sodium with two electrons over here and here eight electrons. And this shell will be now removed. Why it will be removed? Because it has given off its electron. So that's why its size will decrease. Cations will be having a reduced size if we'll compare them with their parental uh, atoms. Whereas anions will be having a larger size when we'll compare them with their parental atom. And second one was chlorine. So chlorine will be possessing two electrons in the first shell, eight in the second shell. And 7 in the last shell. Now, after accepting the electron from sodium, now it will be having 8 electrons in the outermost orbit. So, it will be having a negative charge at the top of this bracket. So, this is how now two ions are produced. One is a cation, one is an anion. Both of them now will react because opposite charges will attract each other. So what will happen at the end we will get sodium chloride. Sodium ion will react or both of these positive and negative charges will attract each other and at the end we will be having a neutral compound which is sodium chloride. How do we determine the chemical formula of ionic compounds? Always remember it's very very easy to write down the chemical formula of ionic compound by these simple steps. First of all, you need to write down the ion with the proper charges and secondly, diagonally move the values. How are we going to do it? Let's take an example of calcium chloride. 
calcium belongs to the second group of periodic table so it has a tendency to lose two electrons so therefore it will be having a positive two charge whereas chloride will be having a tendency to accept one electron and that's why it will be having minus one charge so the first step is to write down the ions we have written the ions with the proper or accurate charges second is to move their values diagonally let's write this these symbols again and move them diagonally so what will happen it, as a result we'll get ca1 there's no need to move the charges uh, with their uh, signs only we need to move their values so there's no need to write one but it's up to you and uh, this two will come with the screen so as a result we will be having calcium chloride so this is the formula of calcium chloride this is how we are going to get the formulas of ionic compounds checkpoint one what is the chemical formula of aluminium oxide aluminium has plus three charge as it belongs to the d block of periodic table it has a variable oxidation state and oxide will always be having minus two charge write down your symbols again and then move their values diagonally not the charges only their values so at the end aluminium th this is dialuminium trioxide or simple aluminium oxide will be obtained next checkpoint is what will be the chemical formula of magnesium oxide the symbol of magnesium is mg and it is having plus two charge because belongs to the second group of periodic table oxide again minus two plus minus will be cancelled because equal values are or same similar values are there so at the end we'll be getting mgo as e, as the chemical formula of magnesium oxide checkpoint three is to write down the chemical for, formula of copper hydroxide now this two is representing that copper will be having plus two charge on it copper plus two and hydroxide we all know minus one again diagonal cross as a result we'll be getting cu oh two now here look at this this hydro there are this two will come with this complete anion this is a polyatomic anion hydroxide so that's why we are going to mention a bracket and then we are going to mention two as a subscript always remember this point next checkpoint is calcium with plus two charge carbonate we know that again it will be having a minus two charge so same charges same values with opposite charges will be cancelled so we'll be having CaCO3 calcium carbonate next is ammonium sulfate ammonium NH4 plus sulfate SO4 minus 2 after diagonal movement of values this 2 will be used with this and here we will be having one so this will be the formula of ammonium sulfate NH4 whole bracket 2 as a subscript and SO4 so this is its formula next is structures of ionic compounds always remember ionic compounds are having giant lattice structure now why do they have giant lattice structure because ionic compounds are having three dimensional structures their ions are very strongly uh, placed they are very strongly attached with one another because opposite charges are present in them if we are going to take the example of sodium chloride here we are having one cation one anion so if we will talk about its giant lattice structure so a grain of salt contains sodium and chloride ion this is sodium this is chloride ion the sodium and chloride ions are arranged in a giant lattice structure or in a three dimensional structure a giant lattice structure is a three dimensional network of ions there are so many ions that are repeated again and again in three dimensional structure of sodium chloride the ions are held in the place by ionic bond 
because here you can see these two will attract each other and they will be having a very strong ionic bond the ions are packed in a regular and repeated pattern the same sodium and chlorine ions will be repeated in a regular pattern if you will look at this look at this this is chloridine this is sodium ion this is chloridine so here in a three dimensional structure they are repeated and they are placed tightly together so how are we going to deduce the ratio so the ratio of sodium ion and chloride ion in sodium chloride along with the remaining part of the unit will be proceeded in the coming video thank you so very much